Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to start the week off nice and easy with a house plant tutorial. We're going to paint the yucca plant. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, so um, I'm using an A5 bit of paper which is um, my brand new uh, watercolour paper pad that I have um, created in collaboration with Frisk. It's 100% cotton watercolour paper cold pressed and all I've done is just cut one of those in half and I've got myself an A5 sheet of paper and I just created a line across the bottom so I've got a, a place for, I've got a baseline basically and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three plants um, so I'm going to do a mini one so I'm creating my pots just by sort of doing curved lines that come along there then we'll have a slightly bigger one I think actually this would be a really cool card idea And then slightly bigger again. So it's a bit broader as well. And then just a little bit of a curve. Okay, and then the yucca plant, it sort of comprises of, well, the, the house plant comprises of uh, these sort of trunks tree trunk stems, very broad stems, and then lots of lovely grass-like leaves. Um, so we'll do, draw those in. There we go. And that's all we need really. You could also just place in just a little bit of the behind side of the pot but we're going to get painting now so I think well we're going to keep it quite simple uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a light wash on the trunks because the leaves are really going to dominate and we need to make sure that we allow the leaves to sort of go layer themselves over the top but I think what's quite good is just to paint in the woodiness so I've got yellow ochre buff titanium burnt sienna up here and I'm just getting really really dilute um, colors just creating a sort of warm brown color and then over here I'm going to just get a little bit of Payne's Grey in there as well and get a slightly cooler option for the brown as well. Okay, I'm going to start with size 2 brush. Let's make sure it's nice and clean, that's why we have the kitchen roll there and I'm going to just paint in really simply just using the brush angled down to one side and look I can do it in a single stroke which is pretty cool maybe another one there we go And I'm going to take a smaller brush, I'm using a four tenths here, and just to sort of start building up the colour and shape on this, I'm just going to add a few lines across the trunk whilst it's still just a little bit wet. Still quite a warm temperature in the UK at the moment. I mean we are heading into summer but it has been extremely warm. So the paint is drying on the page just that bit quicker but we'll still get some nice little lines. And 
and then we'll let this dry and we'll get our leaves painted in. So I'm going to mix together some green gold and some sap green but ultimately I want a nice quite yellowy green colour. If you don't have green gold you could always use a yellow tone and mix that with your main green. Um, I also have hooker's green here which is a really nice vibrant green which is good for mixing which we might use at some point but we're going to start with our lighter colours first with our leaves and then we're going to build up the colour. So I've got a size 2 pointed round brush and I'm going to begin by painting in tapered lines just that sort of hover around the tops of my plants and you'll see that they are sort of layering up over the top of the uh, of the branches and of, sort of, of each other. I'm trying to keep as much sort of white space in between them as possible at this stage but you can see they sort of they work quite nicely um, and the size 2 brush gives a really good coverage so I'm going to move on to the next one So we've got all those painted in and now I'm going to add some more green, more sap green to my mix. I mean you need quite a lot so you could always add a little bit more green gold too but ultimately, <clears throat> excuse me, God Ant and I are really suffering from hay fever this year. Um, like it's been over a month, it's been like six weeks now, I'm just feeling a bit croaky. <coughs> so excuse me, right, so we're now going to move on to the next colour, so just a little bit more green. So this needs to have dried before you do this. And now, now I'm going, trying to decide whether I go down a size, maybe I do. So I'm going to go down to a size zero brush, just maybe for a little bit more control, but you don't want to go too small. And now a few more leaves and just try and sort of mix up where they're where they're pointed, where they're headed. But what can be nice is just maybe a few coming a bit further down the side. So the 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 leaves, when you look closely at the yucca plant, the leaves sort of grow in bunches at the sides. We're not quite at that point for our detail yet. We're still sort of building up the layers. So that's why we're still sort of allowing these leaves to kind of all blend into one another. But yeah, we're just building up the shapes, maybe making sure there are leaves coming out at all angles. The other thing is, it's just if you have, uh, oh, if you have the real thing in front of you at home, fantastic. But also, you can find all sorts of photos online to work from. Reference photos are so useful, especially when you're painting a plant or an animal, because all the clues are right there in front of you. However simply you paint something. I think it's so important to maintain a, at least an attempt to be creating it with a bit of reality and accuracy in mind. That's pretty much sums up my entire watercolour painting process actually, especially with New Botanical Painting, my first book. It was all about capturing the essence of the plant or flower really respecting the 
the structure of it and how it was made, how it was made, how it grows, how it's com composed, but using clever little watercolour techniques that allow us to look really impressive without without doing too much. Don't tell anyone, but yeah, that's the secret. It's all about working smart, not too hard. And work smart, not hard is, is Ant's favourite phrase, and make of that what you will. Um, yeah, so we're just building up the layers. And you can see we're starting to create a slightly 3D feel to our plants. For this next layer, we're going to get a little bit more precise. So I need a, a stronger, deeper green. So I've got sap green here and now I'm mixing in a bit of Payne's grey. We ultimately want it to still be green. So Payne's grey is a strong old colour. I might just put a might just put a tiny bit of green gold in there and just see what happens. There we go. That's a good green. And also it's quite concentrated as well. <clears throat> now I need to sort of decide which plant is in front of which. I feel like this one, the, the little ones in front here. So I am going to use my size zero brush. And actually I might use the rigger brush a little bit. I'm going to put in a few new leaves and then I'm also going to just sort of help define some of the other ones I put in before to just help them really stand out in particularly in front of the plant behind So yeah, if you if you were sort of worrying earlier on, like how are we gonna how are we gonna take that sort of uh, overlap off? Well, this is how we do it. And then for the one in behind, we are going to just use the dark green to either define, extend, or we can place in one or two. But we need to be careful that we don't paint over the top too much and that's how we do it how great does that look and I did it all with the uh, size zero brush actually so no need for any other brushes and now I'm going to mix up a little bit more of this dark darker brown tone and I'm going to get back in there on the the tree trunk, the stems. So the one thing to, to sort of notice is these little sort of bunches at the side of the plant. I'll do a, do a little bit of a brown sort of beginning on the stem there. And then I'm going to just sort of work my way up, doing a sort of back and forth, doesn't have to be every single bit, but we're, we're creating that texture and then I get a little bit more of a darker colour, and just with the sort of finer point of my size zero brush, just do a few extra more concentrated lines on the top. And then I'm just going to clean my brush off and I just want to smooth it just a little bit. And that creates a nice, a nice texture. So those little bits we put on at the beginning are just helping sort of build up the colour and depth on this tree trunk. And it just means that we can then do these last little bits sort of in between the leaves, uh, but the, we had established at least 
the brown trunk colour. To finish off, we're going to do the pots. So I've just been making some colours in my palette. This is a mixture of yellow ochre and permanent rose. And I've put lots of quite a lot of water on the page there, so I'm just going to get a smaller brush that's not got a ton of water on it. And I can just move around what I've got on the page. So. I'm just curving the bottom there just to match the top. Now I've got, um, this is cadmium orange mixed with a little bit of permanent rose. And for now I'm just going to fill these in fairly flat. And then for the last one, I'm going to use some dilute alizarin crimson. This is also the stage that I've just rubbed out the pencil. Um, and now I'm going to just use a slightly more concentrated bit version of the colour of the pot. And I just want to do a really sort of simple and wobbly band around it and I rather like how that just uh, just went nice and sort of dry brushed like that so now I'm just getting a concentrated version of this orangey pink tone maybe just get it so it's at least a, a proper band <clears throat> then the last one go. Nice one. And I will finish off with a tiny bit of shadow. So a bit of Payne's Grey. Just mix a bit more Payne's Grey into that mix there. I'm going to keep it nice and dilute. And I've just got a size 4 brush here. And there we have some yucca plants. I think they'll make a really cool card design. Maybe uh, like a three people, like a f maybe a new baby announcement. You've got a family of two and a new new baby, maybe something like that. It, it's open to interpretation, isn't it? But uh, I really hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little <laughs> notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye.